Eyewitness News, the news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Gary is off tonight. We start with developing news in the war on terror. Two U.S. officials say they've captured a top suspected organizer of the September 11th attacks. Ramzi bin al Sheib was arrested in Pakistan. U.S. officials say he's one of the so-called 20th hijackers who tried to help in the September 11th attacks. That arrest comes after a terror scare in Florida. The whole thing started when a woman in South Florida said she overheard three men say if they think 9-11 is bad, wait until they see what happens on September 13th. She called the FBI and agents found the men driving two cars along a stretch of the interstate. The cars were searched and the men detained. Nothing was found in the cars and it turned out the men were medical students on their way to a conference in Miami. The authorities in Florida felt the tip was credible enough to pursue. The FBI has relied on tips like that to keep track of potential terrorist threats. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Janine Gill is at FBI headquarters with more. Janine? Las Vegas FBI agents say it's essential for the public to reach out to them and call in any suspicious behavior, especially now that the country is on orange alert. Hey, bye. Las Vegas residents have different opinions on what makes someone appear suspicious. People are jumping around and if you hear them talking all the time and if you, especially, you know, if you hear them talking about bombs, I don't care if it's bombs here, bombs there, anywhere. Uh, if somebody actually said something about 9-11, like uh, it happened this morning, that would uh, uh, make me more suspicious, but it was only if they actually did something threatening. Las Vegas FBI agents say they are always willing to listen to tips. Immediately following the September 11th attacks, the phone calls poured in. With the country on orange alert, the call volume is increasing again. We are receiving a, a number of tips, which uh, there again we're analyzing for threat information first to see if there's an immediacy of an event that we need to be concerned about. The FBI says most people call in about a Middle Eastern looking person doing something they believe is suspicious. While most tips don't pan out, agents take each one seriously. One tip that received nationwide attention came from Las Vegas resident Michael Hamden just before the 4th of July. I know what I heard and I heard it very well on my cell. Hamden claimed he intercepted a phone call between Islamic terrorists on his cell phone. After a polygraph test, the FBI determined his tip was not credible. But agents don't want to discourage anyone from calling in, because that tip could be the one that makes a difference. The FBI insists that there are no specific terrorist threats against Las Vegas. Agents say that if you're on the fence about whether or not to call in any suspicious behavior that you see, just go ahead and call it in. It's better to be safe, and you never know, it may lead to some valuable information. Janine Gill, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Better to let them decide. Definitely. Thanks, Janine. The Las Vegas FBI office has tripled its joint terrorism task force in the past year. The task force focuses on prevention and improving intelligence gathering. Agents also say they're changing the process after a tip. Instead of gathering evidence and then talking to the suspect, agents now talk to the suspect first to let him or her know agents are on top of the case. The state Supreme Court made a decision about the home of a murdered casino executive, Ted Binion. The Nevada Supreme Court says the multi-million dollar home can be sold, but the county must put the proceeds of the sale into an interest-bearing account. There's a dispute between Binion's former girlfriend, Sandy Murphy, and the Binion family. The family wants to sell the home. Murphy says Ted Binion willed it to her and she doesn't want it sold. Sandra Murphy is serving time for killing Binion. Well, Metro Police believe foul play was involved in a missing persons case here in Las Vegas. William and Shirley Rundle were in the public spotlight in 1987 when William's 11-year-old son was killed in a high-profile drinking and driving accident. Today, the Rundles are the focus of another police investigation. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Cindy Caesar joins us live from the Rundles' home with the story. Cindy. Well, the Rundles were last seen here at their Las Vegas home on August 17th. And even though there was a note inside saying that they were on a trip to the Philippines. There's also evidence inside to suggest foul play. When the Rundle's garage door was left open for days, a neighbor and Shirley Rundle's daughter called police. When Metro Homicide searched the home on Thursday, they found blood stains on Shirley's favorite chair. That chair was covered in a sheet and moved to another part of the house. 
The couple's 2001 white Buick is also missing from the home, but police recently got a tip about the vehicle. There was a caller that reported that the car was seen where I-15 and I-5 intersect in Southern California near San Diego. Now, we've not been able to follow up on that because the caller was uh, anonymous. This is not the first time that the Rundles have been in the public spotlight. In 1987, William's 11-year-old son, Richie, was killed in a high-profile drunk driving case. The then 22-year-old Karina King was found guilty for the boy's death, and she was recently released from prison. Now police are examining the Rundles' life, trying to figure out who may have had a motive to harm them. Now, if anyone has seen the Rundle's 2001 white Buick with that personalized plate that says Honey Bun on it, you can call Secret Witness at 385-5555 or Metro Homicide at 229-3521. Metro Police say that there is no evidence to suggest that the Rundle's ever even went to the Philippines. They are now testing the blood that was found inside to see if it belongs to either one of them. Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. All right, thank you, Cindy. A long time dispute will be worked out in the ring this weekend. Mm -hmm. This weekend, Oscar Del Hoya and Fernando Vargas will face each other at Mandalay Bay. Chris Matthews is, <laughs> joins us with a preview of tonight's big fight. Well, I know Polly's going. She's got front row seats. Oh, so you're a big, big fan of Oscar. <laughs> <fan. laughs> That's right. Should be a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, outside of a big heavyweight title fight, Saturday's showdown at Mandalay Bay is as big as it gets. A record 61 countries have purchased this fight. Now, the United Kingdom is offering the showdown, which is a first outside the heavyweight division featuring two non British fighters. The last official piece of business took place in front of a huge crowd at Mandalay Bay's event center. Both fighters tipped the scales earlier this afternoon. Fernando Vargas weighs in at an even 154 pounds. 154 pounds for Fernando Vargas. Oscar De La Hoya weighs in at an even 154 pounds. 154 pounds for Oscar De La Hoya. Well, the super welterweight showdown is scheduled to begin right around 8.30 tomorrow night. The pay-per-view numbers are going to be staggering. We'll have more on that later on this half hour. But a lot of people are interested in this big fight. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. of mariachi music, too. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. You get a lot of that, too. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You bet. This weekend's big fight is expected to be a boom for our economy. Experts say every person who comes to Las Vegas for this fight will spend an average of $700 each on non-gaming expenses. These types of fights come to Las Vegas only once or twice a year. All 12,000 seats are sold. Some went as high as $1,200 each. Part of the money earned at the box office goes to Nevada's general fund. The money ends up funding roads and schools. Boxing and, and, and gambling in the, in, in the city of Las Vegas go together very well. There's not very many of these big mega fights, but when they do happen and everything goes well, it's a wonderful experience. The Convention and Visitors Authority says it's hard to know the total amount of money visitors will bring in this weekend. We've heard the term redistricting when it comes to moving students from school to school. Now, the redistricting of some Clark County polling places is affecting some voters. Eyewitness News reporter Renata Troiani joins us to explain. Renata. That's right. It's something that's actually been going on for several years. The valley is growing, and that means moving things around, including voting districts. But it's not as easy as it might sound for the county or for voters. I was shocked, appalled, amazed. Randall Steppen has been voting for a long time, but when he tried to cast his ballot on primary election day, he was told he was part of a group of people that has to either mail in their ballot or vote at an early polling place. In his words, it's disenfranchising voters. And it just isn't right. I mean, we're asked to fight a war. I did that. We're asked to bleed. I did that. Uh, we're asked to pay taxes. I do that. And voting to me is very important. Stepan is one of about 7,000 voters, victims of redistricting. Those are all these little pockets and they all have... Registrar of Voters Larry Lomax tells Channel 8 Eyewitness News all these colored lines represent different voting districts. But every 10 years, the lines are redrawn by the state to accommodate growth. Some areas end up with less than 200 voters. That's where the problem lies. Because of the expense of running a polling place, those areas with few voters have no place to cast their ballots on Election Day. And every time we would make this adjustment, 
we have to print sample ballots, we have to print voting receipts, we have to print ballot faces, and I have to staff the polling place, and I have to dedicate voting machines. The voting machines are essentially $5,000 a piece. That means they're forced to either vote by mail or through early voting. Lomax says until the process is changed, the problem will continue. Uh, now, if voters really have their hearts set on voting on Election Day, they are allowed to go to the county government center. We should also point out that out of the 500,000 plus active voters, we are told that really only a handful have complained about this whole process. Hmm. Are they working on a solution? When we talked to Larry Lomax about that, he says he has contacted the people in charge, the state officials. He says he doesn't know when or if a solution will come. So we'll just oh. have to wait and see. Thanks, Renata. Sure. Some Valley veterans could have to pay more for medical care. Find out why straight ahead. New hope for people with a deadly type of cancer. See how a new drug is destroying the cancer from within. But first, Kevin Jennison is here with a first look at your neighborhood weather. Kevin. Polly and Paul looks pretty good as we head dead ahead toward the weekend. In fact, looking very nice. We'll talk about how warm things are going to get. In fact, we might even heat things up here in the studio. Charo is here to help us get through the weather cast. That's just a few minutes away. All your neighborhood temperatures, too. Right now, I Eyewitness News will take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Chris Matthews. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. A medical center dedicated to the Valley's veterans is closing its doors. That means many veterans will have to go to different facilities around Southern Nevada to get the care they need. Structural problems at the building that can't be fixed are forcing the closure and many veterans are not happy. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Yetta Gibson is live at the Veterans Center with more. Yetta. Polly, the veterans we talked to say the structural problems in this building should be repaired and this ambulatory care center should remain open. They say salvaging a medical care center for those who risk their lives for this country should be priority. War veteran Tom Tricoli feels privileged to be able to walk into the Veterans Ambulatory Care Center and receive all types of care at one location. Structural defects are forcing the center to close. Now the different services offered here will be spread to several different locations throughout the valley. Tricoli says this is unfair. We're entitled to the care, and we're certainly entitled to the care in a centralized location. Not traveling all over the city uh, for an x-ray here or, or, or an injection over there. Veteran Manuel Ramirez says it will be inconvenient. It's just a waste of probably time and probably gas, and plus you got to fight the traffic. And if you need immediate care, it's that good. James Volpone is a veteran of the Korean War. He doesn't mind the extra travel if it means he can continue seeing Dr. Alan Myers. The type of doctor will sit down, talk to you, explain things to you. Volpone wasn't thrilled, though, about hearing that his usual $50 copay may apply to each appointment he makes if it's not on the same day. They'll have a copayment here, a copayment there. And you know, that's going to be a pretty, it's going to be a hardship for the veterans. No date has been set for the center's closing. Now, the Ambulatory Care Center released this statement saying we're open for business and will remain open. We expect to vacate this facility in an orderly and systematic manner to other lease sites in the community. We will strive to minimize the impact on our veterans. Now, the center officials declined to talk with any media today on camera, but say they do plan to talk with us on next week, and certainly we will bring that to you. Yetta Gibson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Let's hope they figure something out, Yetta. Let's mm -hmm. hope so. All right, thanks. Some parents in the southeast part of the valley are upset about how far their children have to walk to go to school. A group of parents and their children protested this morning about the distance children have to walk from their homes to Walker Elementary, a distance of a little more than a mile. The school district uses a special GPS system to measure distances for busing and walking. Kids who live within two miles of the school are not allowed to ride a bus to school. Parents say they still worry about their children's safety. We go from the resident address at the curb, taking dedicated streets or roadways, the most direct route to the school, stopping at the curb in front of the main entrance. If a child was to get hurt, where can they run to? Nothing. There's desert from here and to. Um, also, you know, right next to the walk path is, is the, the freeway exit. 
The school district and students should stay safe by sticking to says students should stay safe by sticking to sidewalks and other dedicated paths and not crossing the desert or other undeveloped areas. If you have questions or concerns, call the school district transportation department at those numbers on your screen. Smart bombs are used in war to make a direct hit on enemy targets. Now that idea is being used in the fight against a deadly form of cancer. See how it works in tonight's medical breakthroughs. And later in this hour, find out what Nevadans think of the Water Authority's plan to buy out Nevada Power. This year, about 54,000 Americans will find out they have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a cancer that starts in the lymphatic system and can spread to other organs. Typically, only half of patients with a particular form of the disease respond to treatment. In tonight's Medical Breakthroughs, we see how doctors can now help even more patients survive. Come on, Nanny. 70-something Sue Ruley is getting over eye surgery. She's taking it easy, just playing with Nino. So far, so good. Four years ago, Sue was treated for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Eventually, chemo stopped working. Doctors told her she would need more serious treatment. You, you never want to hear it. At least I can't imagine anybody want to hear it. She was one of the first patients to test a newly approved drug called Zevulin. Cleveland Clinic Dr. Robert Macklis says it works like a smart bomb and targets cancer. It puts not just one, but two kinds of tumor killing power right on the surface of the tumor and limits the collateral cell damage. This scan shows six showing days after treatment. The drug traveled to where exactly Sue's where cancer we settled. We see one in her neck. We see one in her right armpit. We see a lot in this chain of lymph nodes right along her spine and going down into the pelvis. Dr. Macklis says traditionally these patients have about a 50% success rate with treatment. With Zevalin, it's about 80%. So it's not 100%, but it's significantly better than that 50%, and that's what made the FDA sit up and take notice. I, I think it was just an, an opportunity for me to look at myself, look at my life again, and uh, get on with it, because I'm not dead yet. Now she spends more time brushing up on what she loves in life. Stand by. Patients do have a drop in their blood counts right after treatment, but Dr. Macklis says it's minor. This treatment doesn't cause hair loss, nausea, or vomiting. For more information about this treatment, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope and make sure to write new drug on the front. You can get information directly from our website. The Ms. Fitness USA competition is underway in Las Vegas. Among the 27 contestants is Ms. Fitness Alaska, Kelly Layton, who competes not only with other women, but with multiple sclerosis as well. Layton was diagnosed with the disease in 1999 with symptoms that included numbness, slurred speech, and nerve damage to one eye. Fortunately, her background in dance had taught her that exercise could help. I think that if you use fitness and nutrition as a way to combat or try to slow the progression of any disease, not just MS, that I think it's going to make a significant difference in how, um, how you feel, not just physically, but mentally as well. Layton earned the title of Ms. Fitness Alaska this past April after a lot of hard work and support from her family. The finals for the Ms. Fitness USA competition take place tonight at the Rio, followed by the international version, Ms. Fitness World, on Saturday. And that's tonight's medical breakthroughs, Polly. That's a great story. Yeah, it's interesting. Good Thank for her. Yeah, thanks, Paula. This school season, some children will experience a high level of anxiety over attending class and may even refuse to go to school. In some cases, attending a school for the first time is the main culprit behind the anxiety, but there are other possibilities as well, including problems with their peers. Well, UNLV clinic being offered may be able to help parents and children get to the root of the problem. For more information, you can contact Charles, Dr. Charles Carney at 895 one 
Kevin is here with the weather. We're very excited about your special guest. The building is rocking. No yes. question about that. There's a little energy, a little extra oh, added say. energy inside the studio. Charo is here to help out with the weather. We'll introduce the superstar in just a minute. But first of all, pictures from Pensacola, Florida, where they are bracing for Tropical Storm Hannah. Waves aren't that high yet, although some surfers are getting out and getting an early start. However, the big story there will be heavy rain and some pretty gusty winds all weekend long. Here at home, real-time neighborhood weather. First stop will be near Pecos and Warm Springs, where it's 94 right now. The wind's calm up near Camino, El Dorado, and Ann Road. It's 93, only 15% humidity, so that has dipped from the rain we had earlier this week. Near Sahara and I-15 at Rexbell, it's 93. And one more stop will take us out to Perump, where it's even 90, but only 9% relative humidity. Other neighborhood temperatures still 101 up near Cary and Hollywood. Go across the valley, it's 91 near DI and the Beltway. Outside of town, 63 on the mountain, 88 at Red Rock. And Laughlin still checks in at 100. Highs today as hot as 105 near Cary and Hollywood. Look at all the triple digits here for the middle of September, but go around the edges, especially up in the northwest. Highs were only in the 90s. Outside of town, 74 on the mountain, 100 in Pahrump. Death Valley led the way at 112. At McCarran, the top temperature today was 96, a degree above normal. Air quality in the good category today. And one system is sliding on out. The next one is taking shape to move on in. Pretty small, wimpy kind of system out here. But in advance of it, we're going to get some wind out of the southwest and a few of these high, thin clouds, too. Don't expect them till Sunday. Tomorrow will be cloud-free. But come Sunday, we'll get a few clouds and a few breezes and probably some wind on the back side of the system, too, for Monday. It's now my great pleasure, wait till you watch this, to introduce somebody who's been performing for just a couple of years and now at the Sahara. <laughs> Please welcome, all the way from Spain, oh. it's Coochie Coochie. Ciao. I didn't know. Hola. <laughs> it's great to see you. Now, I have to ask you. Yeah. We had, we had a little controversy in here in the station. Yes. It's, it's not Hoochie Hoochie. No, it's Coochie Coochie. Coochie Coochie. No, no, no. Coochie Coochie. I, you got to bend your knees. Yeah. Bend your knees. I'm going to lose and, something here. No, 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 no. You bend your knees. Like, coochie. Coochie Coochie. Can you we do it. that? It's a family hour. No, All right. Eh, eh. This is a family expression. It is. Now, where did that, that expression come from? You want to know? I do want to know. I was three years old, and this is the truth. And, and you were a shy child. And, no, I never was shy. No. I was come on, hey, the world is so small. No, I was three years old, uh -huh. and I have a dog by the name Cuchillo. C U C H I L L O. Cuchillo. Spanish uh -huh. for knife. Okay. The dog was strong and ugly, but loved me. <laughs> and he was a mix between a bulldog and a Saint Bernard. Uh huh. Sir, he bite you, and then he ran for help. He did. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but the dog wiggled. Okay, wiggled. And I copied the dog. This is a true, Kevin. And I go to everybody. They growing up. I say, como cuchi, como cuchi. I can do como cuchi. You got this stuff from a dog? The, uh, I stole it from the dog, and they never give it any recognition to and the dog. You made a couple dollars out of that. A lot of. I, oh. Cuchi, cuchi, show me the way to the bank. You did. Thank All you right. Very much. Well, I'm gonna cuchi, cuchi out of here and let you do the weather. Oh, you want? You trust me to do? I that? trust you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Channel A. I always want to do that. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I got good news, only good news. Let's see. The, if you like a tempered weather, if you like a storm, if you are romantic, or if you want to be hanging with your uh, boyfriend or, or, or your girlfriend, whatever, this is the place to go. Alabama, right now, is turbulence. Now, if you want a very peaceful situation, you got Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. You got Los Angeles, and you have Las Vegas. You have all over Nevada, including in Alaska. It's doing very good right now. If you like also, uh, oh, look at that, look at that. San Francisco, you got right now in San Francisco. I, I love that. San Francisco 54, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect for a romantic evening. Why? A good dinner, a good partner, and mucho Gucci Gucci. Kevin, I love to do that. I'm having such a good time. Come here. Well, how about these how highs tomorrow? Doing? Where can you coochie coochie tomorrow? tomorrow? I will go for the, the cold weather. It's good for coochie right. coochie tomorrow. Come on. Here, how about here in Las Vegas? Las Vegas tomorrow, I think we're going to have, let me read it. Where would you have Las Vegas? Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to pull you out. We are. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. We're going to find that. 70. Okay, that's the forecast for tonight. Did I, did I spell this right? Gucci, Gucci, you, no, no, let me spell it. Well, no. C-U-C-H-I. Oh, shoot, I spelled it you're, wrong. All you, right. You blow it. You I did blow it. it. I'm sorry. You I, blow it. You that's blow that's it. That's the Americanized spelling. 100 tomorrow with plenty of sunshine. There will be a light breeze and a look ahead at your seven-day forecast. We are looking for 100 temp degree temperatures on Sunday, a little more wind, and then we'll cool down next week with highs in the 90s and lows in the 60s. I, I, I screwed up the spelling. I'm sorry. But you really screwed up. 
C-U-C-H-I, C-U-C-H-I. I'm glad to be here. Oh, and I want to say great. very serious that Channel A did a fabulous job Thank for you. the telethon. Thank I you. am a Thank vice you. president and I am very grateful. We did it from the Sahara, Hotel yeah. Sahara. We, we hosted, we got Clint Hong and the mm -hmm. Chintas and Ron Lucas and uh, uh, Herbie Gorman, Tim Conway. Big success, but you did it a great, great job. Thank you. And, and I want to thank you very much. And I just want to say your show is going great at the Sahara. Thank you for mentioning. Can I have a kiss? Yes, You're so yeah. cute. Aww. Aww. <laughs> He's cute. You did a good job. You're not bad <laughs> yourself. Sahara, we, we, bring, we got bravo, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I got it from the bosses. For locals, had two for one. Oh, two for excellent. One for locals. Yeah. They're, they're very nice. And they can coochie coochie. The bosses are terrific. Good. Very nice, very cooperative. And we went and said, excuse me, the locals will get, and they say yes. Two for one, you nice. show your uh, credit, uh, not your credit card, your Players resume. Yeah. Your you, resume. you probably need to show that, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm very <laughs> happy. You ever need a helper around here, I love Channel 8. Thank you, you for giving me that opportunity. It was a I love it, Kevin. Thank you, Charles. Mwah. Muchas gracias. Adios. I know Adios. Gary Muchas is going to be heartbroken to have missed you. So it's we'll it's get, so much fun. You'll have to come back. I, I will. I will be delighted. And again, Thank you for the channel, eight, you what you did it with the telephone, okay? Thank you don't have to leave you. now. Oh, no. Oh, okay. 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 okay, okay. Hablas español? We're not, we're not rushing out. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Un poco. Un poco. Are you listening? The revolution is here. You know, I was in Los I'm Angeles. I'm going to learn more. You know, I was in Los Angeles airport five days ago, mm -hmm. and I saw five Japanese talking, and a Mexican went by and said, come on, guys, you are in America now, speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. We'll Thank be right you, back. Yeah. You'll be right back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love well, as we reported earlier this hour, Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas, both weighed in at 154 pounds. This is going to be a biggie, a huge crowd at Mandalay Bay. The event center welcomed the two champions as they prepare for this Las Vegas event. Now, overseas, people are buying the fight. Numbers will be impressive. Well, here at home, even more so. Reports that we're getting are scary. As of noon today, this time, there were 137 closed circuit locations in Canada. In Canada, never happened before. And we're getting calls from like bars in Mississippi, wanna watch it on closed circuit. So I'm, I mean, this is blowing us all away. I mean, this thing, you know, it's like, you know, you're doing great, you're doing great, you're doing great, and suddenly it explodes. And so, and look at this crowd here at the way, and I'm really pumped, man, I'm pumped. All right, he is excited. The Rebels, they're excited. They're in the Great Northwest this weekend. They left today at noon for Oregon in preparation for Saturday's nationally televised game against Oregon State. Now, surprisingly, the Rebels hold a 3-0 edge over the Beavers from the Pac-10. Now, remember, Oregon State used to be a terrible team, and my, how things have changed. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we're their first big challenge and everything. We're going to do everything we can to stop them. They like to run the ball a lot. They step the play action pass. They have excellent receivers, by far the best we've played against. So definitely we're going to have to play well, sound football defensively. And They're a good team. I think we're a good team also, but uh, we just got to go in there and play. If we play like we normally play, then I think we could get it done. I mean, from on film, they seem like a pretty good team. It's been a national televised game, so this will be a chance to, you know, show what we can do again. The question in this game is when. You know, I think uh, with a good run defense, you can maybe pass on run downs and run on pass downs. I think that that kind of mixture can can throw off good opponents. I think the good team, good defensive teams that you do what you're expected to do, they can be hard on you. All right, kickoff tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And, Paulie, you mentioned Vargas looks like he's in okay shape, huh? Did I say that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's being nice in case my husband's watching. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You Thanks, bet. Chris. There is more news straight ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 6.30. Nevada Power says the Water Authority is not ready to run the company. Tonight, find out what's ahead for the power deal. And find out what this TV star is such a fan of and why she's in Las Vegas this weekend. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Paula Francis, Gary Waddell, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Chris Matthews. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Thanks for staying with us, Nevada Power customers and the Southern Nevada Water Authority are speaking out about Nevada Power's decision to turn down a potential buyout offer. The buyout is part of the Public Water Authority's plan to take over the struggling utility and cut rates by up to 20 percent. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter Eric Levine has the story. 
Nevada Power's customers were not happy to learn that Nevada Power's management is no longer considering a $3.2 billion tentative buyout offer from the Southern Nevada Water Authority. The Water Authority claims it could save Nevada Power's customers 20% a year. Try to give, give the water place a couple of chances, let them, let them do it. If it's going to save the customer, the customer's what's important. They should keep talking, negotiating, looking at the facts, figures, I mean, you know, put it in black and white so that, you know, Nevada Power doesn't have the questions of the doubts. Nevada Power executives concluded that the Water Authority is not experienced enough or creditworthy enough to complete the deal and they will not open up their books. The letter of interest appears to be an unfeasible proposal. Here at the Southern Nevada Water Authority, officials tell us they completely disagree with what executives at Nevada Power had to say. The Water Authority tells us they manage more than $320 million in annual revenue, and they have no problem securing the bond money needed to complete a deal. As an agency, we've borrowed over a billion and a half dollars, so we've been in the markets. They're familiar with us over just the last several years. Um, extremely confident that that's not even an issue in this transaction. Water Authority officials also tell Channel 8 they will still continue pursuing a deal with the help of investment banking firm Morgan Stanley. But it's clear there's a great deal of work to be done. Eric Levine, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The Water Authority says it will be contacting Nevada Power's management directly in the upcoming weeks. A local internet company has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. PurchasePro.com not only filed for protection, it also settled the securities investigation and it is being sold to a California company. The company was once the largest tech company in Nevada with 1,500 employees, but after five straight years of losses, it has lost most of its value. Well, MGM Mirage is planning to get into the Indian gaming business. The gaming company signed an agreement with the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians. MGM Mirage and the tribe are planning to develop a casino in downtown Palm Springs. Las Vegas FBI agents say it's essential that the public report suspicious behavior, any type, especially now that the country is on orange alert. Here's the latest on tonight's top stories. The FBI says last year, immediately following the terrorist attacks, the phone calls of suspicious behavior poured in. Agents say the number of calls trailed off, but has been increasing over the past few weeks. Las Vegas FBI agents say they are willing to listen to any tips. Police are investigating the disappearance of a Las Vegas couple as a possible homicide. William and Shirley Rundle have not been seen since August 17th. Investigators say they found blood and other evidence in the house that indicates foul play. The couple's son was killed in a high-profile drunk driving case in 1987. 200,000 veterans will now have to go to several different medical centers around the valley for help. Defects in the only one-stop veterans medical care, medical care center is forcing the center to close. Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley says local veterans deserve a medical center of their own. We'll be right back with more news. Reality TV and game shows combine for a new TV show being shot right here in Las Vegas. And a Soprano star makes a Las Vegas appearance. Kate Maddox joins us with tonight's Eye on Entertainment. All the festivities for Sopranos weekend starting to kick mm -hmm. off tonight. <laughs> I think a lot of people are looking forward to Sunday Sopranos premiere. But first, we take a look at a growing new game show slash reality series. This week, Oblivious tried to see if Las Vegas would catch on. We get the hip young savvies, and sometimes they might be a little onto something uh, up. But I'd say, I'd say 99.9%, .9 we get them. Get them is right. Regan Burns is the host of TNN's Oblivious, a cross between candid camera and a game show. But contestants, like this unsuspecting couple tying the knot today on the strip, don't even know they're playing. This chapel was rigged. See this camera right here? See this? This right here? That's fake. Ain't nothing going on there. Don't even look at it. See, we fooled you. But you take a look at this mirror right up here. There's a little camera right behind there. This week, Burns has disguised himself as a blackjack dealer, an Elvis impersonator, and a hotel concierge. Burns asks the contestants five questions. If they get them right, they can win up to $100. But until the plot is revealed, most people just think Burns is a wacky guy. <laughs> to be careful, Oblivious is sticking around Vegas for a few more days. We're going to be somewhere else tomorrow, but I can't tell you. I don't know when this is going to air. 
tonight. Ooh. We might be jacking some uh, news reporters. Faces of Death. What was the sound of music already rented? One of the most anticipated TV premieres is Sunday night on HBO when the fourth season of The Sopranos debuts. You're just so excited to get the script, and when you get it, I'm telling you, this year your, your jaw is going to be like. <laughs> Catherine Narducci, who plays Charmaine Bucco on the hit series, is hosting a special premiere party at the House of Blues tonight, featuring Sopranos look-alike contests, live music, and the Bada Bing Girls. And trust me, even though Narducci isn't quite as New Jersey tough as she is on the show, she I'm still kidding. wouldn't give me the goods on the upcoming season. The only thing I could say is tune in every Sunday night and you have to see for yourself because I cannot tell you the storyline. Because then I'll have to kill you. <laughs> Unfortunately, that party at the House of Blues is invite only, but the good news is the season premiere of The Sopranos airs Sunday night at 9 on HBO. Oblivious also airs Sunday nights at 9 on TNN, which is the national network, not the national network anymore. Oh, it's a okay. new thing. Oh, I didn't oh. know that. So, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. We know. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Kevin Jennison is standing by with the all-important weekend weather. It is Friday, isn't it? It, it is, I've kind of lost Welcome track. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And it's Kevin? the Pacific time zone, too. Most important yeah. forecast of the week as we look ahead toward the weekend. Near Elkhorn and Buffalo right now in your Friday evening. Oop, just dipped to 90. Down in Laughlin, it's still 98. Next stop will take us over to Lamb and Owens on the east side of town. They are at 92, only 15% humidity. And at DI in the Beltway, it's 87 degrees out of the Alexander Dawson School. They've dipped below the century mark up in the northeast part of the valley. Up in the northwest near Buffalo and Cheyenne, it's 94. Down near Rhodes Ranch, it's also 94 and... At our weather station at Wheeler's RV near Las Vegas Boulevard and the St. Rose Parkway, they're sitting at 92 degrees. 61 up on Mount Charleston, up in the mountain of Utah, the mountains of Utah, at least in the southwest. Brian Head is already down to 54. The lake is still at 99, as is Laughlin, and Pahrump checks in at an even 90. Around the west today, how about some of these high temperatures? Phoenix up to 102, Salt Lake City at 75, Denver was at 65, while downtown L.A. topped out at 80 degrees. Around the west and in the Pacific, we're watching this sort of mishmash of cloudiness that'll spread into Southern California and eventually Southern Nevada. Just a few high clouds for us, but some breezes, not ferocious winds, just occasional breezes by the time we get to Sunday. Tonight, we've corrected the spelling in honor of Charo. It's officially Coochie Coochie spelled correctly. 70 degrees for your Friday night low temperature. Then tomorrow, 100, the expected high. Plenty of sunshine. In fact, we won't even see a cloud tomorrow. We'll keep the 100-degree reading going on Sunday, but we'll have a few more clouds then and some breezes oh, in the okay. afternoon. What do you see there, Paula? I see some low 90s. Yes, you do see some low 90s. Wow. <laughs> Can't, can't get anything by you. That's impressive. <laughs> you are a news professional. Even with jet lag. <laughs> exactly. She got that. By the time we get to the end of the week, everybody will see low 90s with overnight lows in the mid-60s. Maybe some more wind at the end of next week. Won't be too long where we'll have those highs in the mid-60s as well instead of the lows. Mm, that would be okay. Months, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Chris Matthews is here. Big fight. It's all about the fight. It's the eve of the big fight. And you know what that means. It is time to tip the scales. Fernando Vargas and... Oscar De La Hoya fired up the crowd of, what, some 30 hours before the opening bell. Plus, good news from Charlie Schoonauer's camp. More coming up next in sports. Well, Las Vegas is preparing for its biggest fight of the year. The fighters tip the scales, each weighing 154 pounds for Saturday's title fight. Well, you get a sense that the rest of the world is noticing something special here. 61 countries, I, I mean, we should give a test in the lobby. I bet that there are at least 10 countries on the list that nobody's ever heard of, like the Bahua. What are they? What are they? Where are they? They're buying the fight. Uh, Saipan is buying the fight. Where is Saipan? It must be in the South Pacific, but I didn't even know it was a country. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. I didn't even have television in Bangladesh. Oh, they're expecting Saturday's fight to begin around 8.15 to 8.30. Running Rebels are going after players and making big impressions. Last week, they got a verbal commitment from guard John Winston. Now they got a verbal commitment from guard Michael Ume of Houston, Texas. Now, if they get Trevor Ariza from Los Angeles, boy, they'll be set. Official signing day is coming up in November. Another Friday night of high school football. And just like last week, Channel 8 will bring you highlights from tonight's big games. Key game will be Gorman at Foothill. Should be a fun one. Both opened their seasons with wins last week. Certainly is a big sports weekend. Make no mistake, and here to shove us off in the right direction is our good friend, Lem Banker. 
Hi, Channel 8 Fortune. Glenn Banker with Checkers. Well, we're going to have a big weekend. There'll be three colleges, three pros, and the fight. Right, Checkers? Hey, gang, listen here. The colleges, let's go with Northwestern over Duke. Georgia turned the ball over six times last week against South Carolina. And our UNLV, you can get up at 16, 16 and a half points at Oregon State. UNLV, don't forget, and the pros. The pros look real good this week. Right, Checkers? Hey, we're going to go with uh, Jacksonville over Kansas City. Atlanta Falcons over the Chicago Bears and the Buffalo Bills against the Minnesota Vikes. Gang, great fight at Mandalay Bay, Vargas De La Hoya. I'll tell you what's going to happen. This fight's going to end up, Vargas is going to be in a, on the floor, De La Hoya by a knockout, and don't be surprised if he gets disqualified. Once he's behind, he's going to start using Mike Ty Tyson tactics, either low blow, or head butting or something like that. Bet De La Hoya and get about a buck fifty. De La Hoya by a knockout. Hey gang, don't don't worry about things could be worse. Suppose they start publishing your errors every day like they do the baseball players, right, Jacob? Oh, oh, oh. so, so anyway, there you go. This is right. De, De La Hoya. You said so that, he wants a, he thinks a knockout for tomorrow's big fight. We'll see. We'll have more tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Chris. The expert. Just ahead, a party for a rare member of the Cincinnati Zoo. Coming up tonight on Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live at 11, it's Fight Weekend in Las Vegas. And the sound of the bell in the ring will also mean the ringing of cash registers throughout the valley. Plus, five Americans are under arrest in New York, accused of operating a terror cell on American soil. Those stories and more tonight at 11 and also coming up on Eyewitness News at 10 on UPN. North Las Vegas police say a little girl's death last Saturday was the result of hostilities between rival gangs. And kids in America are getting fatter and fatter, but some are saying it's not the kids' fault they're, that they're putting on pounds. Tune in for UPN Eyewitness News at 10. That's channel 14. On cable. Yes. <laughs> a very rare rhino celebrated a birthday today. The first Sumatran rhino Aww. bred and born in captivity celebrated his first birthday at the Cincinnati Zoo. To celebrate the birthday, the head rhino keeper prepared a special treat, a two-layer birthday cake made of bread, apples, sweet potatoes with a mashed banana frosting. <laughs> <laughs> in case you haven't had dessert yet. Yeah. They don't now, look that excited about it. Can, can a rhino be cute? That's cute. It's a different kind of cute? cuteness. I uh, yeah. The kids <laughs> think he's cute, and that's all that matters. That's right. That's all they count. That's right. Zoos are great. <laughs> that's tonight's Eyewitness News Live at six. Entertainment tonight is next. Join us again for Eyewitness News Live at eleven.